वेरी गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू ब्रांड न्यू एडिशन ऑफ न्यूज फर्स्ट वीक एंड कमिंग टू यू लाइव फ्रॉम न्यूज स्टूडियोज इन कलम्बो आई मारून दत्ते मुदान नायक एंड इट स्टार्ट ऑफ विद लुक एट द स्टोरीज मेकिंग हेडलाइंस दिस इवनिंग President says he will not appoint Ranil Wickremesinghe again as prime minister in his lifetime. Says if UNP has a majority, a different candidate should be nominated. Who is the UNP's next hope? Presidential Commission of Inquiry to be appointed to probe serious fraud which took place from January 2015. IEP provides statement on alleged assassination plot of the president. Namal Kumar releases yet another voice tape. Sri Lanka army still in possession of 1300 acres of private lands in the north and east. And now the story is in detail. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa made a special statement today. Parliament. The problem is in the parliament. Hence there is no need to hold a presidential election at this stage. No party obtained a clear majority at the general election held in August 2015. The UNP obtained 106 seats, the UPFA obtained 96. The difference was just 10 seats. A UNP-led government was formed only on the basis of an agreement entered into with a group of UPFA parliamentarians. The UPFA group left the government on the 26th of October. Thereafter, several UNP parliamentarians joined our ranks. Today, I am the leader of the largest group of MPs in Parliament. After the parliamentary elections of 1994, 2001, and 2004, Presidents D. B. Vijay Thunga and Chandrika Kumar Thunga, who held office at the time, invited the largest group in Parliament to form a government. On that basis, governments were formed by the People's Alliance in 1994. the UNP in 2001 and the UPFA in 2004 what we did on the 26th of october was to form an interim government that would have lasted only until the conclusion of the general election that has already been declared but temporarily put on hold by the courts in 2006 after the war with the LTTE resumed the people of this country the trade unions consumers professionals businessmen and all sections of the population made it a point to refrain from doing anything that would disrupt the war effort it is because of that public support that we were able to end the war that no one else was able to bring to an end i wish to request the people to extend us the kind of support they gave us during the war in order to get this country out of the economic crisis it is now in This is the last opportunity we have. If our efforts fail, this country will end up like Greece. We will have to work on the assumption that there is a situation of national calamity with regard to the economy. We will have to put a stop to burdening the people with taxes on one hand and then spending lavish amounts on importing vehicles for ministers, spending money on ceremonies and excessive amounts on foreign travel as the UNP government was warned to do. I have to make it clear that after the next general elections we will have to appoint a suitable number of ministers so as to be able to have a stable government before everything else this country has to have a stable government however that new government will have to keep expenditure under strict control it would have been surprising if they didn't in 2015 when we handed the country over to the UNP all those ratings were going up they started coming down only after 2015 I have to say that there is a subtle political element in these ratings as well. In 2009, immediately after the war, when our credit ratings should have gone up, we were downgraded. But the markets had complete confidence in our government, and no one took any notice of the downgrade. The president entrusted the country to us because he knows that we have the capacity to meet such challenges as well. The UNP too is well aware of that fact. which is why they speak to foreign journalists and diplomats on a daily basis in a campaign to convince the outside world that it is undemocratic to hold a general election they know that if a general election is held and a government led by us comes into power we will solve all these problems the government that we will form together with the president will be a powerful and people oriented government as the general election which would have enabled the people to elect a stable government has been delayed it will take some time for a stable government to be formed during this interim period i request the people to stand by us and to participate in the effort to restore economic stability to this country the people will remember that during our period of rule between 2006 and 2014 we took every measure possible to avoid imposing heavy burdens on the people this is why we reduced the price of fuel and some essential foodstuffs soon after assuming office on the 26th of october 
we reintroduced the fertilizer subsidy and reduced taxes on agricultural incomes so as to reduce the burden on the people and to increase production. The cabinet spokesman of the previous government has publicly stated on numerous occasions that in 2015 the people had not voted for a change of government due to any lack of food and clothing. He said that the people voted for a change in 2015 for the sake of democracy. But after that change of government, the people ended up without democracy, without the right to vote and without food and clothing as well. Is that not what happened? The endeavour that we are engaged in now is Sri Lanka's last chance to come out of the crisis it is in. Let us all join hands to defeat the forces that seek to destroy this country by perpetuating their rule without holding elections. <laughs> The complete speech of Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa will be aired on our sister channel, Sirisa TV, at 10.30 p.m. tonight. Now, President Maitri Palasirisena met with foreign correspondents today. President Maitri Palasirisena speaking to foreign correspondents today vowed never to reappoint Ranil Vikramasinghe as Prime Minister. The reports filed by them quoted the President as saying, Even if the UNP has the majority, I told them not to bring Ranil Vikramasinghe before me. I will not make him Prime Minister. Not in my lifetime. It was three months after I was appointed the President and he was appointed the Prime Minister when the first bond scam happened. After several months, another bond scam happened. I have to appoint a separate commission to identify as to how many fraudulent and corrupt activities took place during that time frame. I am hoping to appoint a presidential commission to investigate into the fraudulent activities that took place during the time of Ranil Vikramasinghe from 2015 to the 25th of October 2018. How can we move ahead with a government like this? The corruption was overwhelming. There were corrupt deals taking place, there were land deeds and there were tender fraud. There was an assassination plot. There were interventions into this. Which other leaders in the world went ahead with the government in this manner? Then that individual also has to be corrupt. I am a person who is against corruption. I am a politician who respects democracy. The appointment of the Prime Minister, the removal of the Prime Minister, the proroguing and the dissolution of Parliament, the dissolving of Cabinet, all this has been done legally in accordance with the Constitution. None of it was done against the Constitution. They have gone to the Supreme Court and questioned whether I have the power to dissolve Parliament. No one has challenged the appointment of the new Prime Minister and the removal of the former Prime Minister, the dissolution of the Cabinet and the proroguing of Parliament. The AFP reported that when asked if the President could constitutionally ignore the leader of the largest single party in Parliament, President Sirisena said he would rely on tradition. President Sirisena had noted that there is a tradition that the person appointed Prime Minister should be able to work with the President and that he could not with Ranil Vikramasinghe. He had added that the UNP will have to bring somebody else as a Prime Ministerial option. The no confidence motion in Parliament was not passed in the way a normal no confidence motion is presented to Parliament and it was not passed according to the standing orders. The reason for this is the UNF along with Ranil Vikramasinghe and the Speaker thought that I would prorogue the Parliament on the 14th. So they hurryingly passed this no confidence motion. In a serious situation like appointing a new government after changing the previous government, it is not suitable to obtain a vote by voice. I have reiterated this point. I informed this to the Speaker and all the party leaders. Also in local news, the Badala electorate Balamandala meeting of the United National Party was held today. UNP parliamentarian Harin Fernando expressed the following views at the meeting. I love the Prime Minister and I respect him, but I have informed directly that if there is an election and if there is no change, I will not contest again. The whole country is asking for Sajit. With that leadership and the change that people require, I will state clearly to you that a 51-year-old person will be made the Prime Minister of this country. The old people in the party should be chased away. Then morning, me khala kani vechcha, me hatha pani ke long hari ke na kiti gele wala dala. Ratta. The country can only move forward with a new and young leadership. Ratta ki oti tarai, ratta kodi ani kiri kamar kodi ani. A public rally organized by the United National Party was held in Nuwaralia today. The public rally was held demanding that democracy be preserved and that actions be taken as per the constitution. The rally commenced near the Dharmapara roundabout in Nuwaralia. The protesters then marched towards a Nuwaralia town. A group including Navindi Sanayaka attended the rally. <laughs> Oh, 
We are not fighting for the rights of the people. We are asking that the democracy of all the people of this country be protected. We ask the president to act according to the constitution. He has violated two points. The first one is that he did not appoint Mahindra Rajapaksa after legally removing Ranil Vikramasinghe. We state very clearly that Ranil Vikramasinghe is the legitimate prime minister of the country. As UN peers, it is us who has to decide who the leader of the party will be and who the prime minister has to be. It is not him who has to decide. He has to appoint the person who we nominate as the prime minister. If he says that a different person needs to be appointed, then he has to send that in writing to the chairman of our party, Kabir Hashim. We will not let the party be broken. This is a government that cannot obtain more than 90. If they cannot take more than 90, how can they pass an act in parliament? How will they pass the budget? We do not want an election under this prime minister. We want an election under the United National Party. We, however, have to tell the president the people of this country are requesting for a presidential election. Minister Bandulagunwar then expressed the following views at a media briefing held at the prime minister's office. We have formulated a plan and a target to halt the depreciation of the rupee. Firstly, according to the budget proposal Mahindra Rajpaksa will put forward, during the first year we have targeted to bring down the US dollar to 160 and by the second year we will bring it down to 140. We have also created a national plan to improve export promotion and to create import substitution industries in the country. The first program is the tax freedom given for export promotion. The government had started to charge a tax from the funds brought in from foreign investments. The economic testing unit has estimated that around 8 to 10 million US dollars are being held by Sri Lankans in foreign countries. We will provide legal protection for those funds to flow into the country. If those funds are invested in projects which are approved by the foreign ministry, that investment will not be taxed for five years. Also, there will be tax concessions offered for another five years. We won't allow money earned through alcohol racketeering to be brought in. Secondly, we will create 5,000 export product villages within the country and we request the finance minister to provide us with the necessary financial allocations to carry out this project. Thirdly, during the time of Rana Singha Premadasa, a bill had been passed consisting of legal provisions to create an export processing zone. We will use that bill even though the UNP has not understood how to use it. So, we will work towards creating economic zones which will specialize in ready-made garments surrounding the Katunayake Airport, Pamunua, Maharagama and Migoda and Padukka areas. These will be implemented under concessionary packages by the Board of Investment. A conference was held in Horana under the theme An Intellectual Dialogue Towards Democracy and Political Ethics. Some think the JVP acts like this because we are against Mahindra Rajapaksa. These decisions we take are not taken based on the liking for Ranil Vikram Singha or Mahindra Rajapaksa. We are saying that constitution needs to be protected. The appointment of the Prime Minister was wrong. The removal of the Prime Minister was wrong. The appointment of the Cabinet of Ministers is illegal. Prorogue in the Parliament was also wrong. Dissolution of Parliament was also wrong. A no-confidence motion was brought and ignored. It is wrong to offer money to MPs. This entire system is wrong. What we say is that Ranil Vikramasinghe shouldn't be appointed as the Prime Minister. There is no Prime Minister in Parliament. There is no Ministers of Cabinet. There is no Opposition Leader. Mahindra Rajapaksa had few reasons. One is that he is greedy for power and fame. The dates to hear their court cases have been decided. The other one is that they want to create a government with a minority. This has resulted in a serious problem now. There is some uncertainty about the files at the Attorney General's Department and the FCID. FCID a trade union collective convened a media briefing in Colombo today. I have one challenge for the UNP. They work as one group in Parliament, the TNA, the JVP, the UNP and the Muslim Congress. Then they can come in that same manner as a group for the election. Why are they not facing the general election as a group? They are not doing this. They are making the deals in places that is not seen by the people. We challenge them to do this where the people can see. We are now bringing you the live footage of the media briefing convened at the Temple Trees. Since October 26, we have been told this government was established for a short period of time 
to face an election. And we all know that was never the intention. The original plan was for him to continue to get MPs to cross over. When that didn't happen, parliament was prorogued in the hope that they could purchase some MPs. We will have a comprehensive report on our 10 p.m. primetime news on our sister channel, Silisa TV. A media briefing was held at the SLFP office in Hatton. The Speaker is allowing violence to take place inside Parliament. He is allowing fights to take place in the Parliament. The Speaker is mocking Parliament by misusing his powers. He has taken steps to destroy the sovereignty of this country. Therefore, arrest the Speaker and take action against him before the law. Your with news first and up next is a look at Action TV. This four-acre plot of land, which was a paddy field, has been reclaimed and has been separated into plots to be auctioned off. A senior police officer in the area has bought a piece of land and has begun clearing a road into the plot of land that he bought. This was done with the opposition of the members of the Agrarian Development Centre in the area. In addition to this field, there are several other fields in the area that have been reclaimed in this manner and various constructions have been carried out. All this has happened due to the actions of the individual who acted as the Commissioner General of Agrarian Development until the 23rd of February 2017. He lost his position as a result of order issued by the President's Secretary. In line with this order, the island-wide orders that were issued by the said Commissioner General allowing non-agricultural activities to be carried out on paddy fields and the certificates issued by him claiming that paddy fields are not paddy fields will be null and void. An interesting fact came to light when a case filed at the appeals court regarding a paddy field was taken up. The case was filed by the Deputy Commissioner's Office of the Agrarian Development in the Anuradhapuri District against a certificate issued that a paddy field was not a paddy field. The Commissioner General in question has identified this land as a paddy field and yet has given approval for this plot of land to be given out for non-agricultural activities. Appeals Court Judge Padman Surasena informed the Attorney General that the actions of the Commissioner General were corrupt and that a complaint be lodged against him at the Commission to investigate allegations of bribery and corruption. Even against a backdrop where such orders have been made, paddy fields in the Anuradhapuri district are still being reclaimed according to the approvals and certificates issued by the Commissioner General in question. This happens under the blessings of the Office of the Commissioner for Agrarian Development in the Anuradhapuri district. The Deputy Commissioner of the Agrarian Development in the Badura District has been given the responsibility of the Deputy Commissioner of the Anuradhapura District as well. Farmers in the area and agrarian unions claim that since a person is not appointed to the post of Deputy Commissioner of Agrarian Development in the Anuradhapura District on a permanent basis, the Agrarian Development Act does not function in the district. The kings have built tanks and provided this to the people to provide paddy to the country. This has now become a target of businessmen. They use this land in any way they want. We do not know how they reclaim this land. We cannot allow this to continue. This is a national crime. Shouldn't a Deputy Commissioner for Agrarian Development be appointed to this district rather than people who abuse their authority for personal and narrow gains? This is over to the Presidential Secretary. Taking a look at another one of our headline-making stories, the Sri Lanka Army says that 1,300 acres of private land in the north and the east are still in the custody of the Sri Lanka Army. According to the Army, over 19,000 acres of private land owned by the military for three years from January 2015 have been handed over to the original settlers. The Army stated that these lands were handed over to the residents in a manner that it would not threaten the national security. On the directive of President Maitripala Sirisena, the Defence Ministry commenced a study on the lands that could be released in the north and east. The Army says that the study has been already completed. It is further stated that 95% of the lands have been handed over to the original owners and only 5% are left to be handed over. Private lands in Palali, Kirinochi, Mulatiu, Koppapilau, Mailadi have been handed over to the landowners. The President recently stated that the lands belonging to North and East security units will be handed over to the original residents before the 31st of December. Namal Kumar released yet another voice tape today relating to the alleged assassination plot of President Maithripala Sirisena. 
irida divaina puwat pate according to the sunday newspaper there is an article with a headline which reads president's alleged assassination one step of sacking prime minister this statement has been made by former minister ranjit madhuma bandara now i will release a voice tape these had not been previously given to media institutions however these have been given to the cid kintuwata me handa pata laba dila tiyenne samathuma hambin nena kota oppoma tiyenna ona me Mege in this recording it says we will be going to meet the minister therefore we need to make a stellar plan has such a plan been made who is this minister was there talk of such a minister this minister is none other than ranjit madhuma bandara nalaka silva is a close associate of him this is why ranjit madhuma bandara is defending nalaka silva he can easily stay silent until an investigation is being done and this concluded but he won't these people including sarath fonseca rajesh sena ratna ranil vikramasinghe and ranjit madhuma bandara they keep adding statements every now and then because there is a hidden tale to this i will reveal all of this when i address the people of my birth village in bitanna on the 5th of december 2018 at 10:30 am at the maha oya city on that day all the details will be revealed ekki meki noki kata siyalle mama heli darau karanna RGP Pooja Chasundar appeared before the Criminal Investigation Department today to provide a statement for an ongoing investigation regarding an assassination plot targeting high-profile individuals. According to the CID, the RGP had arrived at the premises to provide the statement at around 7:30 this morning. The IGP left the premises around 11 a.m. after providing the statement for almost three and a half hours. IGP Pujit Jayasundara appeared before the CID based on a notice issued to him. Police said the statement was recorded from the IGP following a revelation by Namal Kumara, the direct operations of the anti-corruption force, about an alleged assassination plot. Here are some more views expressed by the president when he met with foreign correspondents today. Kapila Chandrasena Kapila Chandrasena emerged as a suspect at an investigation ordered by you however he has been made the chairman of Sri Lankan Airlines even Nalaka Gudheva is a person who has cases against him in court both of them have been appointed to high ranking positions <laughs> Now the one at Sri Lankan was removed wasn't he when the appointment was made we opposed it we even opposed Nalaka Gudheva and also removed the chairman of Sri Lankan Airlines we have instructed Nalaka Gudheva to be removed i think he has resigned <laughs> And in sports news, a new national cricket selections panel was appointed today under the chairmanship of former Test cricketer Asantadi Dimel. Brendan Kurupu, Hemant Vikramaratne, and Chaming the Mendis are the other members of the National Cricket Selections Committee. The SLC said the first task of the new selection committee will be to select the squad for the upcoming New Zealand tour. Sports first, Allianz Platinum Awards 2018. api hamata sem balapuruthu wenne we always expect to do sports without using banned substances sportsmen and women who follow rules will be given an opportunity at the platinum awards apply and overcome the challenge i am dr lal ekanayaka by the lal ekan sports first allianz platinum awards 2018 and with that we wrap up tonight's edition of weekend prime time news thank you very much for joining us good night